So my wife just introduced me to Grace and Frankie. And I'm like obsessed with it. Um, and I'm genuinely curious if they were in a book club together and they were given Fifty Shades of Grey, how different would their lives be if they were to read that? <laughs> Well, Grace certainly would, would, her life would be different. She's so square. <laughs> yeah. Frankie knows it all. She's been there and back. <laughs> <laughs> I want to see your character from Miami Vice reading Fifty Shades of Grey. That would be, that would be awesome to watch. Yeah, that ain't going to happen. Yeah, it's not going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there's a great moment in the film where you talk about your favorite thing in the world. And some, I was like, I had tears in my eyes the moment where like, you fall asleep and like the tickling of the arm. And I thought that was such a beautiful moment. The filmmakers did such a great job with that. I'm curious, and this might be a loaded question because you even say that in the movie, but what is your favorite thing in the world? Do you have a favorite thing in the world? personally, as an, uh, just as Jane Fonda and Don Johnson? Wow. I, I don't know. I have so many favorite things. I like being at 14,000 feet on the top of a mountain. Mm. I love being at high altitudes. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> really? That's yeah. awesome. And for you, do you have a favorite thing in the world? <laughs> um, I think the, uh, I mean, at this point in my, in my world, I've, I've, been so fortunate to enjoy so many incredible moments, uh, uh, but truly the best moments in my life right now are the moments I have with my children hmm. and uh, and my wife, and um, and it's the little things. It's not there's nothing any there's nothing specific like I I don't have to be in a certain place or a certain time. Um, just being around any of my children. Hmm. For any period of time, and seeing the the joy and wonder and having conversations with them, it just fills me. I just get high from it. Yeah, and Gene, for you, I was telling you when I first walked in that my mom is obsessed with On Golden Pond, and you've had such an incredible career, nine to five. Everything you've ever done has been absolutely amazing. And but Hollywood has changed a lot throughout the time period that you've been working as an actress and a producer. And I'm wondering, like, just your experiences on a set like that, and how you still utilize moments like that, and how Hollywood has changed and how it's affected you as an actor like on Golden Pond specifically like do you have fond memories of working on that set and kind of utilizing that still as an actress today? I certainly have more than fond memories I mean the movie is is a seminal moment for me my I knew my dad was dying I produced the movie for him yeah. he won an Oscar his only Oscar for it I mean you know, what can get more wonderful for a daughter who had a challenging relationship with her father? Wow. So on many, many levels, it was a very important experience for me. Yeah. Um, I was in my 40s when I made that. If you had said to me that at 80, I would be in a hit TV series <laughs> and um, with a new form of movie called streaming <laughs> and then that I would make a movie which I think is going to be a big hit and that he would be my love interest <laughs> I would have said I don't think so it can't happen so I'm just pinching myself all the yeah. time you know you mentioned um, the beauty of like your family and that being your favorite thing and I this was just a question I was I had when I initially thought saw the idea for the film about the characters reading Fifty Shades of Grey and obviously your daughter was in those mm. movies did you at all have a conversation with her like, like that you were taking Not this one. role is it I was wondering Not if that, one. yeah not one. I mean, you know, it, we're it's the family business, you know, and you don't necessarily run everything you do by the family. Yeah. But, uh, um, but this, <laughs> this is this is sort of, um, you know, it, it's just a humorous coincidence. The movie, it, uh, honestly, um, it has nothing to do with the, with my daughter or the or the book, right. uh, other than it's a, a catalyst for other things to happen. Yeah. You know, to sit across from both of you is an absolute honor. I'm a huge Godfather fan. Obviously, Coppola is an absolute genius. Yeah. And my friends and I have a debate all the time about the best Godfather. Uh, and I know you were in all three. You were in mm -hmm. part three. I'm curious, just on a personal level, outside of the film, do you have a personal favorite of the trilogy? I'm, I've always been a two guy, and my friends always say I'm a one guy. I'm curious yeah. where you guys lie in regards to your favorite of the Godfather, yeah. per, aside from being in one. One, one. You're one, a one for sure. Can I ask why one? Because if it's the original, it's, it's, it's the, original the most thing. amazing. It's the greatest story. Really? Yeah, to me. Yeah, That's I don't like the switching back and forth of the decades and seeing young, you know, the Don no. yeah. yeah. To me, two is a close second, but the one is one, you know. That's there's awesome. There's no yeah. two if there's no one. No, I, it was amazing because yeah. nobody was shooting like that in those days. That was Gordon Willis, yeah. Yeah. the cinematographer. That was really, and I remember how difficult it was for Francis to deal with that with the studio. They didn't understand the shots. They didn't understand why they were going on like that. And meanwhile, genius, Yeah. utter genius. 
Yeah. It's just remarkable. The thing about Gordy, I remember. Think about it first, huh? Yeah. The thing about Gordy, I remember yeah. in three, because you, you've seen him, you were with him all yeah. the time, but as a, you know, an aspiring director, I was, I would go to dailies with him all the time. Yeah. He would take forever to light a scene. Yeah. Mm. And when you go in there, there'd be yeah. lights, every little things everywhere, whatever. But when you saw the movie, it didn't look like there was any That's light right. in the room. That's right. In fact, they called him the Prince of Darkness. Yeah. And well, that was what they were so worried about. Yeah. Yeah. At, at Paramount at It the didn't time. look like it was lit. Yeah. You know? No. But it was... It's unbelievable. <laughs> I mean, it's just actually insanely great. Yeah. And just and to be a part of that was uh, it's so exciting. I remember, I remember he never had, he only ate hamburgers in Italy for six months. <laughs> <laughs> and I'd say, <laughs> really? Gordy, what's, what's yeah, going no. on? Is the He's best Irish. pasta in the world. And he said, ah, they got their pasta, the Italians <laughs> yeah. with their pasta. Yeah. 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 That's no, awesome. It's, it's so true. I can talk. My favorite scene in the film is genuinely that sequence when you guys are at by the water talking about your first kiss, and you have this amazing dialogue about how you like the whole the hand around your face. I, I love that Isn't moment. That, it just that's reminds, really well written. I love the writing there. I was that's, just curious, and I hope we weren't technically by the water, by the way. I, <laughs> we were we were in a barn. <laughs> In the valley. That's you, true. In a barn? Yeah. yeah. That was like one of the best green screen shots it's I've ever seen. It was a little warm there. It was a little warm in that. In that. <laughs> if you don't mind me asking, I'm just curious, do you remember your first kiss? Like when you were like, when, when you were like a teenager, like do you remember that, that time in your Diane life? Diane was my first kiss in yeah. the movie. Oh, okay. okay. He's lying. <laughs> He's totally do you, lying. Do you remember your first kiss? I never have had a first kiss. <laughs> no, I, I've never had the pleasure. Oh. I've avoided the kissing part of life. Oh, wow. Yeah, no, I don't kiss, no. Okay. I'm lying, of course. <laughs> And for you? Uh, yes, I do. I do remember my first kiss. Oh, case. you do? Yeah, you sure. It was in elementary school. Yeah. Elementary? Yeah. Elementary Why was it? I was, I was 10th grade. Yeah, no, you elementary school. You were premature. <laughs> yeah, no, I think, you know, we were, I think we were playing spin the bottle. Was like, Is that right? You yeah. think you were? <laughs> <laughs> I never played spin the bottle. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what I'm doing. No. Yeah, me either. Yeah, but one of the most interesting things about this movie is this idea of ageism. And I think it's so fascinating to, like, especially your character and dealing yeah. with your daughters and yeah. how they treat you differently. And it's really, it's a fascinating thing because it happens all the time. And I'm curious, as actors in Hollywood, as you get older as actors, yeah. have you found uh, the roles you're getting, the way, like, you... Uh, get roles or certain scripts. I mean, that has to be something that happens for you. Well, I mean, for me, it's just a miracle to be working. I mean, think of it. I mean, I'm 72, and he's a lot younger than me. We got lucky with him. <laughs> <laughs> he pulled out the baby and he came in. It was so <laughs> sweet of him. But yeah, I think that. I, I mean, I just can't really believe it. I mean, I I continue. I've been so fortunate. I don't exactly know why, but um, but yeah, of course, it, you, there's less work as you as you get older. Obviously, mm. that happens. But um, I've been fortunate. So I'm genuinely curious how this works. So in the movie, there's a great opening montage of older photos uh, of, of you at a, a younger ages, and like, and then they have the kind of the flip forward in the in the end where you do the real photo. Can you talk about how they find those photos? Do you have to present them yourselves? How do you do you choose which ones you want to give them at a certain age? Well, you, you try to find photos that haven't been shown, that aren't known photographs, that are sort of photos that have been lying in the bottom of a ditch somewhere <laughs> that nobody has seen. And um, I literally went into the files of Guy Webster and found my photos. Wow. A photographer, a friend that we both know, and looking for something that I, I didn't remember at all. Yeah. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. It really is amazing. Now, obviously, uh, I've, I've been watching your films all my life. I mean, I, I think you're both incredible actors. I'm curious, with the changes that Hollywood has been through technology-wise, shooting on film to digital and things like that, as actresses, how has that has acting changed for you? With Because, I mean, obviously, you can go back to some of the cl most classic movies you both have made, and I'm wondering what how Hollywood has changed for you as actors. Do you, do you find Not yourself... Not at all. Yeah, not much at all. Hmm. I mean, your job is still to try to tell the truth in imaginary circumstances and to work off the other person that's there. And that's what was so easy in this movie is that everybody brought it. There was such there was such a give and take among the four of us. And yeah. It was effortless. Yeah, and I was talking to my mom um, because her birthday's tomorrow, and she was saying that uh, she loves Carnal Knowledge, which is like one of the most incredible films ever made. Yeah. And I wonder, like, you know, are, is there a film in your filmography that you will watch if it comes on TV? Will you stop and watch it? Or I know a lot of actors don't want to watch their own films, but I, I, I don't. But, but I mean, I, I've certainly made some movies I'm proud of, but more than I'm not proud of. But hmm. um, no, I, I don't. Yeah. I, I don't. 
Yeah, and I, my wife and I were rewatching the Back to the Future trilogy the other day, and like it's one of my the third one's one of my favorite movies of all time. Oh, and that you. sequence of you and uh, Doc out the train as Marty throws the hoverboard. I'm just like, is that a movie? Is that a moment that you just will always remember? Is, is that a film? Uh, like filming that scene, do you have memories from filming that? So sequence? many memories from that, and also you know I had worked with Christopher Lloyd in the very first movie I ever did, Going South with Jack Nicholson, and Chris Lloyd was the first person who ever spoke to me. Hmm. in a film, you know, and oh, wow. then we work together again, so. That's amazing. Yeah. You know, one of my favorite things in the movie is Jane Fonda's characters talking about their fa her favorite thing in the world, and it's being tickled on her arm, and there's this beautiful sequence where Don Johnson, like, she falls asleep on the couch, and, and I just thought that was, it's an interesting question to ask somebody, because it's kind of loaded to think about your favorite thing in the world, but could you think of one thing in particular that's your favorite thing in the world as just, as a person? That isn't food? That, yeah, it, it can be food. <laughs> it, can totally, it can totally be food. I'm kind of a sucker for a foot rub myself. A foot rub? Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. It, it's hard to get those. I, I am, I'm, I'm, my wife demands them every time we're on the couch, so <laughs> I, I, I've become a masterful foot rubber. But well, that's that's quite, it, uh, it's that's a, quite a boast. It's a talent. It really, yeah. And for you, do you have a favorite thing in the world? Uh, you mentioned food, but do you have any, anything in particular? Um, you know, I, I, I love walking in the city with a cup of coffee. Mm. Cool. Obviously, it's takeout, <laughs> so there's a cover on the cup of coffee. But yeah. that sounds just, so nice. Just walking through the park with yeah. a cup of coffee. Hey. Well, first Hi, of all, Kevin. Hello. How are you doing? I'm good. Congratulations to you. Um, it's Thank an absolute you. honor to be here with you. Um, I'm curious. One of the things I found profound about this movie was what Diane Keaton's character was going through with her daughters and this idea of ageism and how people somehow think when someone gets older they can't take care of themselves. And But I also <laughs> think it's interesting with ageism in Hollywood. And I'm curious as an actor over the years how the roles have changed for you, the, the scripts that you get as you get older as an actor. Like, ha Have you noticed like things shifting? Oh, totally, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I can remember being a young actor, so to speak, uh, in my 30s, late 30s, 40s, and working with guys, Ernie Borgnine, uh, hmm. uh, just uh, Kirk Douglas, and and having them explain to me what the business was like when they started and, hmm. and the transitions and where they find themselves now. And now I'm finding myself back, you know, in that position where I'm describing what it was like. To younger actors? To younger actors and, and mm. also just reflecting on it. So it's definitely a, it's a condition, mm. if you will. It's a state of, of existence that's completely different. Your character has a very profound moment where he speaks about retirement and how he's genuinely scared about who he is, where he is in his life. Um, and I was wondering, uh, as an actor, did you ever have that moment? Like, did you ever find yourself reaching a moment in your in your career where you said, "Okay, what what do, what am I doing now?" Well, that's what that scene is. Yeah, yeah. And it's me describing what it's like to be in this position of having worked for all this time and now finding yourself in a in a in an age group that's all of a sudden not as uh, exploitive yeah. or, or not as sought after. And the reason why I love this film was it spoke to that. Yeah. And so it was exciting because we're all just kids. Yeah. You know, we just have these different these different bodies that we're traveling <laughs> in. And, and emotionally, most of us are back in high school or late grades for me, yeah. grade school. So it's, it's really a, a very interesting journey. And it was fun to be in something that explored that. Yeah. If I could ask you a dumb filmmaking question, and if, it's, stu if it's stupid, go ahead and just say, there I'm not no, answering it. There are no stupid questions. I, it's a stupid question. Okay. I am genuinely curious. That is so stupid. <laughs> <laughs> how did they film the Viagra scene? Like, what do, like, how, what do they do to, like, like, as a filmmaking process to do that scene? Like, well, if it's a dumb question, you don't have to answer. I'm just curious. Uh, no, I mean, you've got in your dressing room in the trailer, I walked in and there's four dildos <laughs> hanging there and I'm supposed to try them on. Now, I've never had a dildo in my trailer. I've had a lot of things in my trailer right. and dressing rooms, but not that's a new one. So that was fun because <laughs> now I had something brand new <laughs> and I didn't know how to put it, you know, they have to get in. And then we had to measure it and see what it works. And then you got to try them on, take them off, try them on. And so that was. That took up a good part of the night, and yeah. then you go out and you start to do it, and pretty soon you're so tired of it, and it's quite uncomfortable, I must say. <laughs> it's one of the funniest scenes ever, so it worked. Whatever you had to do, it was very, very good. funny. Yeah. You know, I've been, it's an honor to sit across from you because 
you've played so many iconic roles, and obviously coach is a very big role for your, for your career. I'm curious, when you play somebody for that long, how that changes you as a person? Like, how did coach change you? And I, I know that when you act, you go into a role, you go home. Some people take their roles home with them. I know some actors do that, but as we sit here today, is part of coach still with you? How did he change you? Yeah, uh, totally. I mean, I, uh, he changed me because it was very difficult for me to get into that. I, mm. uh, it was hard to understand what it is they wanted from this guy. So once it happened and we're starting to roll with it and we're getting on to a year and a year and a half, two years, it became, uh, and you know you're going to be doing it for a while, uh, it became not only fun, but it be kind of became a burden in a way because mm. it was like... Uh, a lot of that, a lot of who that guy was, I didn't particularly care for. So, but I had fun with. And then, so it's then finding out. It's also growing as an actor inside of something, uh, or trying to, and make it work uh, to open you up to to kind of broaden how, how you're gonna how to play a, a certain kind of scene, comedy, and and how to take texture it and all that. So it was exciting. Um, Do you miss him? Yeah, hmm. sure. I mean, I look back on it and I go, gosh, you know, well, it went by so quickly at the time. It was like, yeah. it seemed like it was going to take forever. But uh, sure, yeah, I look back on it. And, and with Jerry Van Dyke's recent passing, uh, even more so. It wow. was, um, yeah. yeah. Well, Craig, this is an absolute honor. Thank you for, Thank you. for talking filmmaking with me. It's, <laughs> yeah. It truly is an honor, man. I Thanks. love your socks, sir. Thank and you. Sorry for the dumb question. No. <laughs>